Welcome to my mad scientist lab, where I, Professor Insano, will now collect some of Pokemon's most beloved starters and ruin them by mixing them all together and swapping their bodies. There are no rules here, just make the most outlandish and horrifying creatures imaginable. This is a certified 11pm fort when I didn't have internet to make some real freaks. So I hope you enjoy the weirdos that emerge from this. And if you do, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that bell so you don't miss any more freakish videos like this. Alright, let's just jump straight in. I used to randomize it here, so I got the best combos imaginable, I'm sure you know. So our first two up to the Body Swappinator trademark is Meowth and Embor. Let's jump into a different timeline then with a look at our sick and twisted new kitty first. Going from this rather small and slender cat to large made me think of swapping Meow's cat breed to something a little more appropriate, and I could think of nothing more perfect than a Scottish fold. Not quite the munchkin kind here, because it would need to be the large kind of cat. The kind that thinks it owns you and will use your lap as its pillow till you become a skeleton. I think Baldea starters are absolute banging designs and it shows that I can change the body shape of it and it still holds up here. Even if it is a little bit more like an Og cat akin to something more like Perugly, it gives me big bully vibes like it an Incineroar would show up on the playground and take my lunch money bringing back bad memories here of young professor. One thing that was, I guess, interesting was looking for rest and Yaskarada's turnarounds because boy howdy did I need to have that safe search on for this one. At least I managed to find a ref for its tail and I decided to go something a little more funky and give it a fun little stumpy tail. Along with body swaps, I think secondary typing swaps would make sense for these two as well as getting the fighting type here. Watch out, it's gonna make some pretty heavy biscuits on your face. Meowskarada, the need Pokemon, a grass and fighting type. A large, rather sad looking Pokemon, Meowskarada is bred to have this appearance, but they are quite happy, albeit a bit lazy. They love nothing more than lying on their trainers and kneading them. Their large hands are quite powerful and their muscular bodies support this strength. In battle, they leap onto foes and forcefully push into their bodies to cause serious injury. Even to spectators, it appears as if they are merely kneading their foes. Yaskara to have the abilities in this form overgrow and thick fat. Let's now reverse it all. Ambor is our cool Ganondorf looking journey to the west character with such disappointing typing and stats they just need a hug. But instead we're going to make him a smaller, slender, fire dark type Pokemon with all the makings to fight Incineroar but none of the intimidate. So he's still kind of trash. It was hard to make this look unique enough while still keeping the Miascarada looks, so I opted to give it this almost anti-hero, possibly even villainous look to it, with pose to match and turn the cape-like thing that normal Miascarada has into two capes of fire, which ended up making it look a bit like some kind of strange Power Ranger Sentai sort of thing. I can kind of see using these capes of fire almost like they're these thrusters from a jet to unleash almost Falcon Punch levels of attacks. And I think that's what this reminds me of, actually, Captain Falcon. Just think, if this was canon, we could have ended the firefighting lineage early and, and saved the franchise of firefighting Pokemon. Embor, the Heat Haze Pokemon, a fire and dark type. Using the fiery flourishes hanging from its back, Embor can superheat the area surrounding its foe to induce hallucinations. During this time, Embor sneaks around to find the perfect weak spot and strikes to take out the foe with one hit. If Embor encounters water, it overheats itself to turn it all into steam. However, if it falls into water, its flames extinguish, Embor falls into a deep depression and may lash out. Embor have the abilities Blaze and Defiant. Our next two randomized starters to swap are Rillaboom and Samurott. And as you can already tell, this video is going to be incredibly cursed and you are so welcome. Samurai was one of those starters that I actually really do love, but suffers a bit from its quadrupedal nature. Being a Pokemon that uses swords but also needs to be on all fours makes me believe it probably would be a bit more adept in the water, and would probably look more graceful too. But thanks to Rillaboom donating his large ape stance, we can rectify this. My idea was to make Samurai a lot more muscular and have a stance of almost some kind of hulking greatsword using boss in a video game. Maybe a Souls-like or Elden Ring boss. The Wandering Shell Blade. But I thought if we were going into this with a big, thick, strong boy, his sword should change to match. 
Instead of it being a more slender blade, it becomes this massive, almost serrated greatsword. Luckily, Samurai can schlop his blade back into his armor normally, so he isn't hindered by this large shell blade. Keeping the form of the Rillaboom side of things, I gave Samurai some large locks of hair draping down from behind. And honestly, this thing gives me a big Berserker Barbarian vibe now. Samurai, the Swordsman Pokemon, a water type. Samurai has mastered the blade and uses a massive, detachable shell like greatsword to cleave through anything in its way, while the rest of its shell serves as armor. It uses stones in the water to finely hone its blade. The shell's slight irregularities help it to seriously wound enemies with a serrated edge. Samurai has evolved to move swiftly both on land and in the water, ensuring its prey cannot escape. Samurai have the abilities Torrent and Sharpness. But things go awry when we do the opposite. Even for a giant otter like things, Samurai looks awkward, so what do we do for a giant ape? Well, not much. I decided for this one to slightly shift the species of Rillaboom here. Luckily, the species I chose, the Mandrill, works well enough that it could keep the Rillaboom name without much worry. But even still, this one is kind of horrifying and messed up, because I kept the proportions almost entirely the same. So we have this awkward, long neck, fat bodied Rillaboom. Just be glad I didn't add some kind of weird replacement for the shells of Samurai. Maybe some kind of log armor, but instead I went crazy with the leafage, giving it some cool leaf facial hair and body hair. Oh, thinking about the leaves' as hair irks me out. Imagine this thing in game just bounding along with this awkward build. And yes, you are welcome for that little nugget of imagination now. Rillaboom, the mandrill Pokemon of grass type. Rillaboom are found in large colonies deep in the jungle, where they claim entire territories for themselves and aggressively push out any other species of Pokemon. They are mean and rude, even to each other, and battles are a regular occurrence within the colony. These conflicts can escalate into all-out wars, resulting in many members of the colony becoming outcasts. These outcasts Rillaboom are the most dangerous, attacking anything without remorse. Rillaboom in this form have the abilities Overgrow and Leaf Guard. Infernape and Superior. Yeah, just let that set in. Are you ready for some true sin? Let's start with Infernape because, yeah, Snake Monkey. There's not really any way that this can be spun in a not creepy way. It's just a long version of Infernape, and luckily because of Infernape's amazing pre-established design, this doesn't actually look half bad. And Infernape and Superior having sort of similar motifs allowed me to give it a few nice little swirly bits that fit well. Superior having tiny baby hands does not help though here, as our Infernape snake just gets tiny little swirls that probably wouldn't work well for hands anyway. We remove that pesky fighting type too and donate it to Superior later, so pure fire type to you. You'd think that I'd be able to add some cultural myths of some kind of snake monkey here, but many of them are literal monkeys with snake heads. It doesn't really add anything to the design. Infernape, the monkey snake Pokemon, a fire type. So incredibly rare that this Pokemon was once thought to be merely a legend, Infernape has emerged more frequently in recent years. They inhabit dry grasslands where they set fires to aid in hunting, yet their mastery of this technique prevents the grasslands from burning down. Many find them unsettling, especially when an Infernape wraps itself around its trainer for a hug. Infernape have the abilities Blaze and Reckless. For Superior, I did something a little sillier. Instead of making sort of more of a lizard snake with legs, I almost made it like some kind of snake within a plant that's shaped like Infernape. A grassy mech, if you will. I even kept it the same pose as Infernape. The more I look at this one, the more horrified I am, as it does kind of look like some kind of horrifically peeled Superior. Like it's some kind of banana Pokemon that has now taken revenge upon others using their hooked banana ends. Again, lucky that Superior has a great design in general, so it saves their horrific snake mech look, at least partially. Sort of. <laughs> Superior, the combat snake Pokemon, a grass and fighting type. Superior has two long vine arms that are incredibly flexible and capable of extending. Tipped with two sharp barbs, they use these to move swiftly through the forest, grabbing branches with ease. They usually eat their prey whole and use their tendrils to throw small Pokemon like Pidgey and Rattata straight into their mouths without hesitation. 
A whole colony of Superior can pose a danger to smaller Pokemon populations. Superior have the abilities Overgrow and Iron Fist. Our last cursed duo isn't as bad and the lucky to a Cinderace and Empoleon, a bit similar to Ambor and Meowskarada. I learned something very interesting when doing the Empoleon body swap. Empoleon's design rests very heavily on their shape. I did two very similar designs here trying to keep the shape close to that of Cinderace, but both looked almost more awkward than any of the others and I think it has to do with Empoleon having quite a unique shape that is difficult to translate into a smaller size. It ended up coming out almost sort of ninja-like, with this one I kind of paid close attention to giving it the neck ruffle and leg fluff similar to that on Cinderace, and it has me imagining it to be some kind of quick assassin-like Pokemon with smaller hand blades. Getting rid of that steel type too so it loses most of that luster it has before. The first pose was a bit awkward and didn't show enough of the body so I ended up slightly reworking it to show off more of that penguin body if you can even really call it a penguin anymore. <coughs> Empoleon, the strike Pokemon or water type. With a slender build and sharp nails on their hands and feet, Empoleon is made for swift and quiet attacks that an enemy never sees coming. Many have gone on to call them the assassins of the seas. Above water, they deftly bound around thanks to the size and shape of their feet, but underwater is where they shine. The three prongs on their head act like a trident, able to impale anything unlucky enough to stand in Empoleon's way. Empoleon have the abilities Torrent and Sniper. Alright, here we go, the final of the video, and the one that was the most meme -y. Now, I didn't intend for this. My main idea was to make a much thicker Cinderace that would play up being more of a goalie than a striker. It's a bit more lax and instead of using its feet and kicking it's all about blocking things with its massive paws. It would also work quite well for slapping. But sadly instead all I can see here is that of Big Chungus. The pox a plague upon my video and I'm the creator of it and now this is my legacy trying to make an official looking Big Chungus Cinderace Pokemon. All in all, however, it does look quite cute and could see it being an interesting regional form somewhere with a few changes to colours and shapes here and there. But nope, this is Big Chunga Cinderace, you'll take it and you'll enjoy it. Cinderace, the goalie Pokemon of fire and steel type. Living in rocky and icy conditions, Cinderace has adapted a hardy body designed to keep them warm and well protected. Their hands have incredibly tough palms that they use to block attacks. Even a Hyper Beam rarely damages the shield their palms create. Cinderace is inspired sporting equipment for goalkeepers, especially in the Galarian region. Cinderace have the abilities Blaze and Magic Guard. A bit of a strange one, I'm sure, but this is what happens when you follow spur of the moment silly ideas. Comment down below your thoughts on the video. Again, as well, don't forget to like, sub, and hit that bell icon so you never miss a video. Hope you haven't been too traumatized, but thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Hey! Yeah? What the hell is this?